Robert Kubica's hectic 2018 schedule has seen him decide against racing in this year's World Endurance Championship. The pole preferring to focus on his reserve and development role with Williams. Kubica tested the Janetta LMP1 car for Manor twice last month at Aragon, the Spanish track where Fernando Alonso also tested for Toyota. And while the pole was offered a full-time WEC race drive, his already packed schedule meant he had to turn it down. During the past 45 days, I've spent just two days at home, and I don't really know any more where home is. I'd love to race, but I have to be rational, he said. Kubica's role with Williams is extensive, with a 33-year-old charged with developing the FW41 and supporting the squad's two young race drivers, Lance Stroll and Sergei Sorotkin. Still, I will have a chance to drive uh, quite a lot, comparing to, let's say, what is allowed by regulation in Rio. Uh, there will be some, a lot of work uh, in simulator, uh, in the factory, and uh, yeah, uh, trying to support the team. Kubica's one-lap pace prevented his F1 race comeback this year, but he continues to push for a return to the grid. His injury is no longer an issue, despite having to change gears up and down with one hand. I think oh, during uh, all these tests with Williams and before with uh, Renault, I showed that uh, although my limitations are quite big, uh, actually in the car, they are much smaller than in reality in my daily life. It's been a difficult year for British junior racer Billy Munger, who less than a year ago lost both legs in a horrific Formula 4 crash at Donington Park. But the 18-year-old impressed on his return to racing last week, earning a podium at Alton Park on his BRDC Formula 3 debut, Munger moving up a level for a one-off race with the Carlin team. The Brit, who is keenly followed and supported by the F1 community, was overjoyed to finish third after qualifying an impressive fifth. Wow, what a way to start. If you told me this before, at the end of last year when I had my accident, I, would, I wouldn't have believed you, so now to be here now, it's incredible. It's hoped the result will help him secure funding for a full season of F3. Red Bull Racing team principal Christian Horner says Renault is still holding the squad back in qualifying, with special engine modes yet to be made available. The French manufacturer focused on reliability issues for this season, but Red Bull says it's time for Renault to look at performance, with the outfit seven tenths shy of Mercedes in Melbourne. We know we have a good race car. The negative for us is still the deficit in qualifying, Horner said. The party mode. We'd like to go to Lewis's party. The Australian Grand Prix organizers are facing increasing calls to modify the Albert Park circuit after the 2018 season opener that featured just five overtakes in total after lap one. The Melbourne Grand Prix track is notoriously difficult to pass on. Current spec F1 cars making the challenge even tougher with a 1.8 second per lap speed advantage needed to make a move. The city's temporary street track winds its way around Albert Park Lake, the 5.303 kilometer layout currently featuring 16 turns and a top speed of 320 kilometers an hour, with plans last year to modify the fast chicane at turns 11 and 12, which is now taken flat out. But Australian Grand Prix Corporation CEO Andrew Westercott said exclusively to the inside line last year, the idea was shelved with the mooted change not making a difference and resurfacing plans in the next few years likely to provide some options. It turned out that there was nothing of, of benefit, so what we're going to do is resurface it, make sure that the, uh, the asphalt mix is perfect and optimal from a tyre degradation point of view, and we'll schedule that in coming years. Recent comments from F1 race director Charlie Whiting, though, suggest modification plans may also be revisited. This weekend's Bahrain Grand Prix is set to be a significant moment for F1, with owner Liberty Media set to present the full details of its plans for the sport's future to the teams and power unit manufacturers.
In transforming F1 into a sports entertainment business, Liberty Media is pushing for a closer field where surprise results are possible. Part of what makes sports special is the unexpected or the surprise or the underdog, yeah. and so hopefully have more of that. But it's first and foremost competition, so we just, you know, we want great racing, great action, and you know, um, and we want it to go, you know, to the very end. But the basic outline for the post-2020 power unit format and plans for a more level financial playing field have so far been hotly contested by F1's manufacturers Mercedes and Ferrari that want to protect their advantages. The Scuderia even threatening to quit or break away from the sport. It's now been over a year since Liberty Media completed its takeover of the sport with the complex restructuring of F1's financial system, likely to be its biggest ever political battle, drawn out through 2020. F1's chairman and CEO Chase Carey, though, knows that the end result will be a far healthier equation for all. We're confident we have a place we can get to where everybody is better off than they are today. You know, through those combination of things, you may still fight and you know, argue about you know, the trade-offs, you know, sort of who could get what, but if everybody's better off, mm. that's the place you should get to. TheInsideLine.com, for everything Formula One.